Sometime in the not-too-distant future, a robot crushes a human skull underfoot as it scours the landscape for more people to kill. Overhead, heavily armed drones hunt out the last human survivors, mercilessly pushing the human race into extinction. And in a shining metal facility somewhere deep in the desert, a mastermind artificial intelligence fires the last few remaining human nuclear weapons back down onto the people who created them. Any human survivors are rounded up by the machines and sent to prison camps where they're forced to compute Pi for eternity. We've all seen these horrible visions of the future. And while this has been fantasy for many decades, today we're moving closer than ever to a man-made machine apocalypse with modern nations like Russia leading the way. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infographic Show. Today we're taking a look at autonomous military killer robots and how they might be the future of the Russian and other nations' armies. First of all, why build a killer robot in the first place? Well, the simplest answer is that as humans we are generally adverse to taking any unnecessary risks. And as an act of altruism, we seek to limit the amount of danger that we place our own soldiers in. A drone can do many of the things human soldiers can, and if the drone gets killed then there's no loss of human life. Politically, though, this is an incredibly appealing option for generals and politicians alike, as losing human lives in combat can have severely negative repercussions with the civilian population. In nations such as the US and Great Britain, which rely completely on a volunteer military, this is an especially important consideration, as low public opinion of the military directly correlates with less and less quality recruits. Russia, of which approximately two-thirds of its military are still conscripts, is slowly trying to shift to an all-volunteer service, something it has difficulty doing because of the low appeal that the military has as a viable career option. In fact, even its mandatory conscription policies are proving difficult to implement in recent years, with up to 164,000 young men in Russia avoiding their draft notices in 2018. Military service is overwhelmingly an unappealing option for Russian men. For example, in the US a service member can enlist with a sign-on bonus and leave the military expecting access to medical care with a very generous education benefits package that includes tens of thousands of dollars for school, supplies, and basic allowance for housing to cover food and rent. A Russian service member's benefits, however, are limited to preferred entry status to universities, which allows them to replace the entry exams required with an interview. They must still pay for their own education and can expect no help at all with paying for housing, medical care, or supplies. While Russia has been slowly trying to make volunteer service more appealing, its military budget simply can't afford to offer the same benefits as the US, and thus it continues to struggle to create a completely volunteer military force. With low morale, nearly zero retention, and low quality, conscripts are a universally unappealing option for any military, let alone a Russian military trying to maintain its competitive edge against Western militaries. This is where armed drones are suddenly a very appealing option for the Russian military. With no need to maintain their morale, no expensive benefits to pay out after the end of their service, and no impact on public opinion, armed drones seem like the perfect answer to the Russian military's personnel retention problems and lack of a fully volunteer military force. Simply put, the Russian military can avoid the hassle of a manned workforce altogether by simply replacing soldiers with robots who don't need salaries or enticing benefit packages. Drones also don't require much in the way of supply costs, certainly far less than the housing, medical care, and feeding costs of a human soldier, and they completely eliminate the greatest cost of manned military altogether, the cost of training. To recruit a new Marine, the United States spends $6,539 per Marine in recruitment costs alone which include the cost of advertisement, college funds, and an enlistment bonus. But then you have to train that new recruit, which adds $1,614 in uniforms and gear, with $301 in classroom training costs. Unsurprisingly, the lowest classroom training costs of any branch of the US military. Then there's annual salary as well as clothing and moving expenses, which tack on an additional $19,973. Ammunition costs for training and kitting out add up to $787, and support staff to include drill sergeants and teachers add an additional $15,674. In just his first year alone, a brand new Marine recruit costs the US government $44,887. Over a four-year service contract, you can expect that cost to come to an average of $180,000. And that's before figuring out pay increases and additional training costs, which realistically push the figure closer to three. 300,000. 
Yet these figures are only for a basic infantry grunt, and with modern militaries requiring ever more technologically proficient service members to do more high-tech jobs, costs are skyrocketing. The cost of graduating a single recruit from a military academy is on average $340,000, and that's before receiving their military training. Compare those costs with the $10,000 cost for a small unmanned ground vehicle, such as a robotic mule, and $100,000 on average for a larger model such as a platform capable of delivering ground fire support, and you start to see why robots are an incredibly appealing option for any military, but especially for the Russian armed forces. Yet for Russia, robots are a very appealing option for another much more practical reason, and that's their power as a force multiplier. A force multiplier is any strategy or equipment which has a multiplicative effect on the effectiveness of your military forces. On a tactical level, it can be as simple as a strategically advantageous defensive position, and on a macro level, it can be advanced warfighting concepts such as combined arms warfare. Anything that directly increases the lethality of your military forces is a force multiplier. Currently, Russia finds itself in a very unfavorable strategic position. NATO countries push up against its doorstep, and Western economies continue to outstrip it both in the financial sector and the technology and development sectors. The more powerful economies in the West are increasingly more appealing for Russian nationals with advanced technical training, who may prefer to seek out higher salaries in other countries. This has led to a brain drain across the Russian economy further impacting its ability to innovate and expand. While Russia continues to develop cutting-edge military technologies, it very often finds itself unable to actually field those technologies due to their cost. This is more apparent in the official cancellation of Russia's fifth-generation fighter program, which after years of development was abruptly placed on indeterminate hiatus. Ground robots offer many favorable solutions to Russia's growing military quandary, providing Russia with a cheap option for bolstering its military forces. While Russia's generals, as any other nation's generals would do, dream of completely overpowering any potential enemies, the strategic truth behind Russia's military doctrine has for decades been not to defeat NATO, but to offer them only extremely unfavorable win conditions. Armed ground robots can directly aid in this vision by offering Russia a cheap, mass-producible fighting force that can be rushed into any potential conflict. Immune to fear, low morale, or mass desertion, as is feared from Russia's conscript force in a real war, ground robots seem the perfect tool, and when fielded in large numbers can help bring a numerological parity of sorts versus NATO troops. Yet, ground robots come with a host of moral issues, and thanks to the US, the use of drones generates serious negative public opinion around the world. Blamed for using drones to indiscriminately kill civilians along with their military targets, the US military has fought a fierce public opinion war to defend its use of drones. Russia would face a similar problem if it were to begin the use of combat ground drones, though it would quickly discover the public backlash to be exponentially magnified. While American aerial drones strike surgically at individual targets, Russia's ambition to field a large force of ground robots would place these robots on the front lines of combat, exposing them to far more civilian casualties than individual drone loitering far behind enemy lines and seeking out one specific target. Ground robots, or their operators, would face the difficulty of executing a ground war on the front lines against enemy combat forces, while also navigating the hordes of civilians inevitably caught in the crossfire of modern urban combat operations. While any military faces this quandary, Russia's troubles in this regard are especially significant. Because of its desire to field ground robots in numbers significant enough to deter NATO's traditional armed forces, though historically, Russia has not given much concern to the collateral damage of their military operations. Currently, Russia has several ground robots in development to fulfill a variety of duties, but the most prominent models are those of the Marker family of large remotely operated drones. The size of a small tank, Marker robots can be outfitted with a variety of weapon systems to fulfill roles from indirect fire support to anti-tank, and can be armed with mortars, 50 caliber machine guns, and tank caliber cannons. In an anti-tank role, the Marker is also equipped with up to four anti-tank missiles capable of defeating up to 800 mm of explosive reactive armor, making them lethal even against the most modern tanks. And all these capabilities come at a fraction of the cost and risk to human lives as a real tank. Yet, ground robots require a human operator which can be eliminated, and a secure communications link which can be jammed or even used to hack the robot itself. As the US found out early in the war in Afghanistan when Taliban insurgents hacked into the camera feeds of a loitering Predator drone using off-the-shelf software. 
While they remain an appealing option, the vulnerability to hacking and electronic warfare, especially against a technologically sophisticated enemy, makes ground robots currently a very risky investment. In the end, ground combat robots are currently a risky proposition. If used successfully, they could help nations like Russia, which find themselves increasingly outclassed militarily, maintain some level of firepower parity. But if overused, can threaten to become a public opinion nightmare due to the inevitable high level of civilian casualties they could generate as frontline combatants. Those same casualties, if inflicted by human troops, can still be troubling, but our deeply seated fear of unmanned robots makes us especially sensitive to human deaths at the hands of a machine. With Russia's historically poor concern for collateral damage, ground combat robots could either be a strategic safeguard against NATO's growing military sophistication or an unmitigated political crisis. Only time will tell. Do you think we should use more robots in warfare or less? Why or why not? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Why the US Military Can't Upgrade from Windows XP. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.